This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 991. Stop wasting your time on these healthy eating habits. And are false choices holding you back? Both by Dominica Lessi of dominicalessi.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Happy Monday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs, all for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more. And then on Fridays, I answer your questions right here on the show. Oh, and hey, may the 4th be with you. I'm a self-proclaimed nerd, but I'm actually not a Star Wars or Star Trek super fan. But it's still fun to acknowledge these commonly observed days in nerddom. Heck, I can't wait till Batman Day comes around again. And yes, I've heard the release date of the next Batman film has been pushed back. Darn you, coronavirus. All right, enough of that. Back to today's episode. Now again, I have two posts for you today, so let's get right to them and start optimizing your life. Stop Wasting Your Time on These Healthy Eating Habits by Dominique Alessi of dominicalessi.com. When I was just starting out as a project manager, one of the most impactful things I learned, both to be more effective in my job and to reduce my own stress, was the distinction between high-leverage and low-leverage tasks. A high-leverage task is one in which the input yields a disproportionately large output, a task with a big bang for the buck, as they say. If you've ever heard of the 80-20 rule, the principle's the same. Small input, large output. This idea tends to come up a lot in the workplace, where we are primed to focus on productivity, returns on investment, and maximization and efficiency but it can also be applied to healthy eating. If you're trying to improve your eating habits, incorporating more veggies into your diet will get you much farther than finding, say, naturally flavored alternatives to your favorite artificially flavored candies. In my opinion, some of the most high leverage healthy eating related efforts are, one, learning to cook. Take a class or watch a video or just experiment on your own and empower yourself to cook healthy meals for yourself and others for the rest of your life. Two, drinking water. So many health issues, from headaches to irritability to food cravings, are the result of dehydration. Three, minimizing consumption of processed food. There is virtually universal agreement that eating too much processed food negatively impacts health. And four, eating more fruits and vegetables. On the flip side, there is virtually universal agreement that eating fruits and veggies positively impacts health, whether you're looking to lose weight, prevent disease, reduce pain, improve your mood, increase your energy, or the like. Now this is in contrast to things like finding meals and snacks with the optimal ratio of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Well, useful perhaps if you're targeting 6% body fat, but otherwise unnecessary. And things like counting every calorie consumed. This is helpful as a short-term strategy for increasing awareness, and monitoring eating habits, but generally a low leverage burden in the long run. And then there's keeping up with and deciphering food label wording. The fewer processed foods you eat, the less you have to deal with always changing, purposefully misleading food labels. And then there's spending hours reading nutrition research papers. The fundamentals, meaning more unprocessed foods, especially fruits and veggies, aren't going to change. So focus on that first. Importantly, the leverage of a given effort is dependent on what your goals are and where you're at in your journey. A low leverage task for me might be high leverage for someone else, and a low leverage task for me today might be high leverage in the future. The key is to identify what initiatives are high leverage for you at this moment in time and according to your goals. This isn't to say that low leverage tasks don't have their place. Sometimes we want to go all in, not just most of the way. But with millions of things to tinker with in the healthy eating space, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and disillusioned. Identifying your high leverage efforts can be a powerful way to avoid burnout while ensuring you're making measurable progress towards a happier, healthier you. And I have another post in just a second, but first, thank you to BetterHelp. I'm sure you know that it's equally important to take care of both your physical and mental health. There are several ways to make your mental health a priority, one of which includes speaking to a professional therapist. 
BetterHelp connects you with a licensed professional therapist online where you can schedule your weekly video or phone sessions at your own convenience. With counselors specializing in relationships, trauma, family conflicts, and more, they make it easy for you to change your counselors whenever needed. Plus, BetterHelp offers financial aid, which makes it affordable to everyone. BetterHelp is not self-help. It is professional counseling, where everything you share is confidential, and it's not a crisis line. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com OHD. Join over 800,000 people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash O-H-D. Are False Choices Holding You Back? by Dominique Alessi of dominicalessi.com. I've been thinking a lot lately about the idea of a false choice, a choice between two things that you assume are mutually exclusive but really aren't. As an example, you might say, I can go to the gym or I can go to my doctor's appointment. Even if the doctor's appointment conflicts with your normal gym time, you can go to the gym before or after the appointment. The choice between the gym and the appointment is a false choice. Most commonly, false choices crop up when we're trying to adopt new habits, like going to the gym. They act as convenient excuses to avoid the activity we don't really feel like doing. But they can also appear in broader belief systems and behavior patterns. Here are a few examples of ones I've been pondering. You can view food as fuel, or you can view food as pleasure. False choice. You can treat food as fuel part of the time, and food as pleasure for special occasions. You can live an ambitious life, or you can live a simple life. False choice. You can live ambitiously in some areas of your life, and simply in others. You can love and respect your body, or you can want to change your body. False choice. You can love and respect your body, and still want to tone up or lose weight. You can be grateful, or you can want more. False choice. You can be grateful for what you have and still want more out of life. You can accept who you are or you can change yourself. False choice. You can accept and love yourself and also challenge yourself to change and to grow. You just listened to the posts titled Stop Wasting Your Time on These Healthy Eating Habits and Are False Choices Holding You Back? both by Dominique Alessi of dominicalessi.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I really like that Dominique addressed this either-or trap we often fall into. She's so right. We can be happy with who we are at this very moment and want to improve ourselves at the same time. As human beings, we are lucky enough to be able to hold two different thoughts in our heads at the same time. So yes, feel and express gratitude as often as you can but also know that it's okay to want better for yourself. Now, I also want to mention something about reading food labels. Dominique was again right in that we don't want to spend too much time at the market deciphering food labels, especially during these days of quarantine and social distancing. If we have to make a trip to the store, we probably don't want to dawdle and stare at each and every food label to make sure it meets the nutrition goals we have set for ourselves. Instead, here's an easy trick. When looking at the food label, Ask yourself, does this product have more than five ingredients listed? If the answer is yes, then you can be pretty confident in the fact that it has a number of additives and preservatives. And so if one of your goals is to consume fewer additives and preservatives, maybe pick something else. And of course, you can save a bunch of time in the produce section. Fresh fruits and veggies don't have any food labels. Nothing to decipher there. That's because we know that they are already a smart purchase. All right, that'll do it from me for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.